In this video, we're going to focus on the formulas associated with arithmetic sequences. So what exactly is an arithmetic sequence? So this is basically a sequence of numbers that is associated with addition or subtraction. Notice the pattern of numbers that we have in this example. 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, 17, 20, 23, and so forth. Now the two is the first term, which we can call a sub one. Five is the second term. Eight is the third term. 20 is the seventh term. 23 is the eighth term. And a sub n is just a generic term in this sequence. Now notice that we have a common difference between the terms of the sequence. Notice that to get the next term, you need to add 3. So the common difference in this sequence is 3. Sometimes you're adding, sometimes you're subtracting, but there's going to be a common difference. If it's addition, the common difference will be positive. If it's subtraction, as you go from left to right, the common difference will be negative. Now, to get the nth term of a sequence, you could use this formula. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times the common difference. So for instance, if I want to calculate the fifth term, it's going to be the value of the first term, which is 2. And n, since I'm looking for the fifth term, n is going to be 5. And the common difference for this sequence is 3. So 5 minus 1 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, and 2 plus 12 is 14. So 14 is the fifth term. So that's the function of this formula. It tells us the value of any term in the sequence. Now, there are other similar formulas that we can write that's related to this particular formula. Because let's say if we want to find some term in a sequence, but we don't know the first term. For instance, let's say we want to find the seventh term from the third term. How can we do that? Well, here's another generic formula that you could use. A sub k, where k is some number in the sequence, like some type of term, is equal to a sub m plus k minus m times the common difference. This equation, as you could see, is very similar to this one. But in this example, we can see that k is 7, m is 3. And then it's going to be the difference of these two subscripts. So 7 minus 3 is 4 times the common difference, which is 3. And it makes sense when you think about it intuitively. If you're starting from the third term and you want to get to the seventh term, how many common differences do you need to add to go from the third term to the seventh term? It's going to be one, two, three, four. So you need to add four common differences to go from the third term to the seventh term. So thus, it makes sense that a sub seven is equal to a sub three plus four common differences, or four times three since 3 is the common difference. So we could simplify that to saying a sub 7 is equal to a sub 3 plus 4d, where 4 is the difference between these two numbers. And this equation here, I'm going to rewrite it just below this one so you can see how they're related. It's a sub k is equal to a sub m plus k minus m times d. In this example, k has the same function as n. m is basically 1 in this example. So these two equations are essentially the same. The only difference is, instead of m, we have a 1 here. Now this another variant of this formula, where instead of this is 1, you know, m is actually 0. So you have this one, a sub n is equal to a sub 0 
and then plus, since m is 0, this becomes n minus 0. n minus 0 is just n, so you get this. a sub n is equal to a sub 0 plus n times d. But all three of these equations will do the same thing. They will help you to find the value of the nth term or the kth term, whichever one you want to find. So you don't always have to start from the first term. You could start from the zero term or some other term like the fifth term or the twelfth term, and you could still get the right answer. So I'll give you another example. Let's say if I wanted to find the ninth term from the second term. Let's say I don't know the value of the first term. It's going to be a sub 9 is equal to a sub 2 plus the difference of these two values, 9 minus 2, which is 7, times the common difference. So a sub 9 is equal to a sub 2 plus 7d because we need to add 7 common differences to go from the second term to the ninth term. So the second term is 5, as we can see here, and then plus 7 times the common difference of 3. So that's 21 plus 5, which is 26. So if we add 3 to 23, we'll get the ninth term, which is 26. So that's how that particular equation works. Now the next formula you need to be familiar with is the arithmetic mean. The arithmetic mean is basically the average of two numbers. But when dealing with an arithmetic sequence, here's how it works. If you were to take, let's say, the average of the first term and the fifth term, you're going to get the term in the middle. The average of 1 and 5, 1 plus 5 is 6, divided by 2 is 3. So the average of the first term and the fifth term will give you the middle term, which is 3. So if we were to average 2 and 14, we're going to get the third term, which is 8. So 2 plus 14 divided by 2. 2 plus 14 is 16. 16 divided by 2 is equal to 8, which is the value of the third term. Let's do another one like that. So let's say if we want to find the arithmetic mean of the third term and the ninth term. What is the middle term between the third and the ninth term? The middle term between the third and the ninth term is going to be the sixth term. So if we were to average the third term and the ninth term, we should get 17 because the average of 3 and 9 is 6. 3 plus 9 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. The third term is 8. The ninth term is 26. 8 plus 26 is 34. 34 divided by 2 is 17. So that's how the arithmetic mean formula works when dealing with an arithmetic sequence. Now here's a question for you. What is the difference between s sub 6 and a sub 6. a sub 6 represents the value of the sixth term, whereas s sub 6 represents the partial sum of the first six terms. So s sub 6 is a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 all the way to a sub 6. So it's going to be 2 plus 5 plus 8 plus 11 plus 14 plus 17. So that's the value of S sub 6. A sub 6 is simply 17. It's the value of the sixth term. So this is what is known as a partial sum. By the way, whenever you have a pattern of numbers like this separated by a comma sign, it's a sequence. When you have a pattern of numbers separated by a plus sign or a minus sign, it can be addition or subtraction, what you have is a series. But typically, it's going to be a plus sign. It's usually plus, but if you're adding negative numbers, 
then it's the equivalent of subtraction. So whether it's a plus or minus, you still have a series. Now the formula that we need to calculate the partial sum of a series is this. S sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus a sub n divided by 2 times n. So we're going to calculate this both ways. First, let's use our calculator to get the sum of those numbers. So 2 plus 5 plus 8 plus 11 plus 14 plus 17, that's 57. Now using this formula, I'm just going to rewrite it here. S sub 6 is going to be equal to a sub 1, the first term, plus the last term, which is a sub 6. So these values are both n. So if you see a 6 here, there should be a 6 there. And then we're going to divide by 2, which means we're taking the average of the first and last terms. And then we're going to multiply it by n, the number of terms. So that's how you can calculate the partial sum of a series. You take the first term and the last term, you average those two numbers, and then you multiply by the number of terms in that series, and that'll give you the partial sum. So the first term is 2, the last term is 17, so the average of 2 and 17, that's 19 divided by 2, so the average is 9.5. So we take the average of the first and last terms, multiply by the number of terms. So 9.5 times 6, that will give us 57. So that's how you can calculate the partial sum of a series. So here's a practice problem that you could try. If you were to see something that looks like this, what would you do? So whenever you see this sigma symbol, it represents sum or summation. We're adding the terms in the sequence. 2n plus 3 is basically the nth term of a sequence represented by this formula. So what I like to do is I like to write out the series first. We're going to start with this value, n equal 1, and we're going to stop at n equal 5. So if we were to plug in 1 into this equation, it's going to be 2 times 1 plus 3, which is 5. If we were to plug in 2, it will be 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 3. That's going to be 7. And then the next number, 3, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3, that's going to be 9. And for the fourth term, it's going to be 11. And the fifth term is going to be 13. But we're going to stop at the fifth term. So this expression is equivalent to the sum of the first five terms. Now, because this is just only five numbers, we can just type it in the way we see it. We can just mentally add those numbers. Five plus seven is 12. Nine plus 11 is 20. And 12 plus 20 is 32, plus 13, that's 45. So that's our answer. Now we can also use the other formula. We can take the average of the first and the last terms, so 5 plus 13 divided by 2, and then multiply that average by the number of terms that we have in a series, which is 5 terms. So what's the average of 5 and 13? 5 plus 13 is 18 divided by 2 is 9. So the average of these two numbers, the first and last term, is 9. And if we take that average, multiply it by 5, it will give us the sum of those five numbers, which is 45. So those are the most common formulas you're going to encounter when dealing with arithmetic sequences. By the way, for those of you who want more example problems, Feel free to check out the links in the description section below. I'm going to be posting some videos there with some extra content that you can 
put these formulas into practice for those of you who are interested in doing that. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance.